We all grow old and as we do, many changes occur, a few pleasant, many not so. You get older and with age your hair color will turn gray or white. Your skin will get wrinkled and your body will turn out to be stiff. As you experience the ill effects of joint, muscle, and bone issues. For a long time, we've acknowledged that hardening of the joints and fixing of the muscles were a characteristic piece of getting old. We saw that with many people before and maybe we never understood or were a place to know that. We all had to see and experience age for ourselves. Too late, perhaps we say to ourselves that we should have done this or that or that we should have take better care of ourselves. Is it too late? Or we doomed to go through the agony of many that preceded us or what? Recent research and science seem to tell that with proper care and attitude, nutritional, exercise can reverse some aging effects and live a well-meaning life. Science has now discovered that in over half of the old people do not exercise and can for sure benefit from participation from some sort of daily movement. Heck, I would even say that this applies to many younger people. The life of ease and leisure has for sure contributed to the increase of health problems. In any case, this article will attempt to look at that and examine ways we can address that shortcoming and suggest ways to help them. It's no big surprise that middle age and older folks have to take their health and their lives and the lives of their loved and deal in a well manner way to improve what is ailing them and hopefully arrest what is causing them pain and discomfort. Bone and muscle problems in the aging body. The most well-known bone and muscle issues. The senior body may encounter as some form of joint pain and extreme cases of osteoarthritis when the ligament for your joints starts to separate. Osteomalacia, softening of the bones, which is a conditioning of the bones, osteoporosis that prompts weak bones when bones lose their mass. Rheumatoid joint pain, which is a severe irritation in the joints and can cause torment and a disability to move. Muscle changes. As we age, there are a couple of changes that our muscles experience that lead to the above issues. Our muscle filaments become smaller and we have less of them. And the sensory system changes and lead to less muscle tone and a diminishes bone density. Our bones change. We don't regularly consider bones living tissue, yet they totally and furthermore our experience with bone density changes for the worse as we age. Our bones start to lose more calcium and other significant minerals due to the hormonal changes that happen as we age. Women are particularly prone to this and are defenseless after they've experienced menopause. Men are also subject to problems of bones. It must also be mentioned that many people who played sports in their young days and suffered from injuries feel pain as age advances. Joint changes. The development in our joints is an after effect of the development of tendons. The streaming of synovial liquid which encompasses your joints and layers of ligaments that shield bones from coming into direct contact with one another. Nonetheless, in the aging body, tendons can become shorter and less adaptable. There is less synovial liquid to grease up joints, and ligament diminishes. The entirety of this prompts in making the joints inflamed and in pain. If you are an older individual or a senior, you need to strengthen your muscles. Keep up sound bone mass and moreover keep yourself from muscle adversity. Unfortunately, the problems of advancing age is not just limited to muscles, joints and limbs. Many other problems surface alongside. Many people become prone to elevated blood pressure, blood sugar issue, heart problems, and strokes, stomach issues, back pain and may other worst ailments. This is a pretty unsavory picture man of man and woman in the later years. And it is bleak. 
it is not only the looks on the face and body that changes. Practically everything else does. The person is a shell of his or her former self. So what is in store for the elderly? Throw your hands and give up. Sometimes, certainly it feels so. However, on the bright side, we all know someone who has lived well in his or her later years in a pretty meaningful way. With many physical, mental and emotional abilities intact. A 90-year walking or even jogging. Or a 80-old tending to the garden and other chores. Or an old person in command of his or her facilities. Why did nature smile or them? What does science have to say in that regard? The aim here is to see what research can teach us and help us live a little easier. Or maybe a lot easier, and try to put into practice what nature teaches. After all, there is better teacher than nature. Are you ready for the ride? Healthy living for senior citizens. The health of mankind today has expanded due to advancement in science, technology and other branches of development. Be that as it may, seniors currently face more difficulties as they live to mature ages. There are various factors because of this. It could be that one needs more money especially as everything prices have skyrocketed. It could be loneliness and seniors are left alone and many times have very little human contact. To carry on profitable lives as far as might be feasible, here are a few hints to help. Most importantly, carry a change to your way of life and dietary patterns as you cross 65. In the event that you have not been carrying on with a solid life till now, the time has come to give some unhealthy things that may not be workable. Smoking is one thing that needs to go as it can prompt such issues as Alzheimer's infection and lung illnesses. Liquor and other substance misuse additionally need to go. The previous excesses cannot be permitted. With respect to your eating routine, attempt to stay away from food that may be unbeneficial. These food may contribute to hypertension and heart issues. Rely on organic products, vegetables, breads and grains, meat, poultry, fish and milk. Incorporate dry beans also. Sodium admission ought to be lessened or completed deleted, particularly those things with sodium that come from prepared food varieties. Watch for sugar, sugary products and remember that sugar is possibly hidden in most processed foods. Senior residents should expand their admission of calcium as osteoporosis is a typical issue among maturing ladies. Carry on with a functioning life however much as could be expected. Some type of activity like walking or some sort of movement ought to be done ordinarily as far as might be feasible. Jiu-Jitsu and yoga are particularly useful for seniors as these assistance to battle joint issues and firmness that occurs when maturing. If you can't do strenuous exercise, stick to walking or lie versions of physical activity. Be that as it may, don't practice excessively, as this can put a weight on your body's maturing organs. Go for customary physical exams in any event when you are well. Men should go for customary prostrate checkups. While ladies ought to know about their bone thickness as low bone thickness can prompt osteoporosis. Be watching out for unexpected change in your conduct or that of your partner. Try not to disregard cases of you failing to remember things out of nowhere or on the off chance that you can't recall late occasions. Your public activity ought to likewise be completely appreciated at this age. Try not to quit going out to your normal gatherings with companions as a result of your age. In this pandemic times, however, take precautions such as wearing masks, keeping social distance and whatever notices the health officials tell you. Truth be told, you should meet guidelines more consistently. Socialization is an extraordinary method to battle age-related issues like Alzheimer's sickness and discouragement which regularly comes because of depression. Ensure your home is sealed against unplanned falls and knocks, inquire as to whether you go. Follow the advice of experts such doctors, nutritionists and exercise experts. Hopefully, all these suggestions will help you stay on the right track of a healthy way of life. What does the normal individual consider when they think about a maturing or older man? Undoubtedly they'll portray somebody who's slight, who's frail, who's lost muscle, strength, and dexterity. However, does it truly need to be that way? Are you familiar with a wonder called, sarcopenia? The age-related loss of bulk. As we age, we seems to become weaker. Does it must be like this? As we age, we lose muscle. Everybody realizes that, isn't that right? It's guaranteed. The older we get, the less bulk we actually have, the more vulnerable and more fragile we become. Happens to everybody, correct? In any case, does it, truly? The appropriate response is, actually no, not really. 
that doesn't need to be an image of things to come for anybody. In this video, we will be investigating methodologies and its merits that you have. In any case, for building new muscle, at whatever stage in life. Yet, before we get into that, we should investigate why we should work at holding or building muscle. Also, there's a great deal of reasons why. The principal reason has to do with portability. It implies that we can't get around just as we used to. It implies that we can't participate in the kinds of exercises that we used to. It implies that we can't do as much for ourselves. It implies a deficiency of freedom and independence. What's more, in the long run it will mean living in a helped living climate. But we should flip that around and center around the brilliant side. Building muscle as we get older, having more energy. Furthermore, having the option to keep on carrying on with the sort of life that we appreciate. Expanding bulk raises the digestion, making it simpler to shed pounds or keep that load off. It likewise converts into looking and feeling good, and having more certainty. The age-related loss of fit bulk is classified, sarcopenia. Not to be mistaken for, cachexia, which is the dying of the body because of ongoing ailment, similar to disease. Essential, or age-related, sarcopenia is the immediate consequence of maturing, when no other reason is clear past maturing itself. Optional sarcopenia is the point at which at least one different cause is available. For example, heftiness, osteoporosis, diabetes, malignant growth or rheumatoid joint pain. In this conversation, we're simply going to discuss essential, or age-related sarcopenia. After the age of 30, muscle misfortune happens at a pace of as much as 3% to 5% each decade. Most men will lose about 30% of their bulk throughout the span of their lives. What's more, that lost bulk can have an overwhelming impact. Lost bulk can lead straightforwardly to a misfortune in strength, a lower basal metabolic rate, diminished movement levels, a deficiency of utilitarian status and, it can cause critical inability. Loss of bulk is additionally attached to deficiency of bone mass. The absence of activity that prompts sarcopenia likewise prompts osteoporosis. They strengthen each other in a descending spiraling circle. What's more, older men with sarcopenia as twice as prone to dampen a bone in a fall. Whether or not they have osteoporosis or not. Thus, we should investigate how this interaction of losing bulk happens. The greatest offender is, idleness. As we age, it's characteristic to need to back off, to relax. We've acquired it, correct? Wrong. We're at an age when dormancy is actually some unacceptable activity. Muscles react to pressure. Be that as it may, they additionally react to no pressure. What's more, the rate at which they decay when we don't pressure them quickens as we age. Implying that as we age, it takes less and less effort to escape shape when we quit focusing on the muscles. So practicing has never been more significant. Doing opposition preparing, regardless of whether it's weight preparing or doing bodyweight practices or whatever. Is everything thing that you can manage to hold or even reconstruct, your muscles. The web is loaded with pictures of men in their 60s, 70s and 80s that are fit and strong. Implying that it's never past the point where it is possible to improve bulk. There are more seasoned people who practice each day and stay in shape, even during the 70s and past. It's rarely past the point of no return. The following greatest reason is a decrease in chemicals. Ensuring that testosterone, human development chemical and thyroid are at appropriate levels is basic to building up. Indeed, even to keeping up bulk. The levels of these chemicals go into decay as we age. Yet, they don't have to. There are a lot of all characteristic techniques that will re-establish chemical levels. So holding or remaking bulk is only one of numerous reasons why it's a good thought to enhance chemical levels. Another reason for sarcopenia has to do with diet. As we age, our utilization of protein goes down. The majority of us are basically not getting enough of it. However protein is basic to keeping up bulk. We can lift loads throughout the day, however in case we're not energizing that exercise with sufficient protein. Our muscles won't develop. In any event, when not working out, on the off chance that we don't eat sufficient protein to support muscle upkeep, mass will be lost. So it's significant that we not just track how much protein we're devouring. Yet, that we truly see the amount of that protein we're retaining. What amount is going towards the maintenance and development of new muscle? 
Also, what amount is going towards filling our exercises, which ideally isn't a lot. We need to fuel our exercises with complex carbs and top-notch fats. What's more, use the protein we eat for muscle combination. So the purpose of this is that all expectation isn't lost. It is conceivable to keep up, or even remake, bulk and keep sarcopenia under control. What's more, all there's motivations to do as such. The more bulk that can be kept up. The more strength, spryness and portability we'll have, and the more autonomous we'll remain. We'll have more grounded bones and be less powerless to falls, and more averse to break a bone in the event that we do fall. More muscles will give us a better capacity to burn calories and assist us with keeping the load off. It will likewise improve us and give high bloodstream to the organs, keeping them solid. It stores more glycogen, assisting us with battling against diabetes. Furthermore, it will eventually make us look better, and have more energy and certainty. It doesn't make any difference how old you might be, it's never past the point of no return battle sarcopenia. Stay dynamic, worry your muscles by lifting loads. Monitor your chemicals and do all that you can to enhance creation. Also, ensure that you eat, and retain sufficient protein to fuel muscle amalgamation. Fighting off sarcopenia is an enormous piece of expanding our well-being range. The time allotment that an individual is solid, dynamic and portable, not simply alive. We would all be able to utilize motivation, it is conceivable to battle sarcopenia. Numerous more established people have done that. So can you. Did you know that you start to lose muscle at a mere 30 years of age? Whether we like it or not, muscle starts to degenerate with each decade of life. This age-related muscle loss, known as sarcopenia, springs from many factors, including inactivity, inadequate protein and increased levels of the regulatory protein myostatin, which impedes muscle growth. Clinical studies have shown that high levels of myostatin can lead to reduced muscle mass. Sarcopenia impacts overall health as well. Age-related muscle loss can limit daily activities of living and increase the risk of developing type 2 diabetes and obesity as well as cardiovascular, neurological, and orthopedic diseases. That said there are steps you can take to help stem the effects of sarcopenia. Incorporate exercise. Moderate physical activity, along with resistance training, can help promote muscle growth and reduce the impact of this biological event. Focus on food. As you age, adequate protein intake plays an important role in maintaining muscle health. Nutritional Supplements Re Muscle Health products feature the revolutionary Fortetropin as a proprietary product of the MYOS Corporation. MYOS Re Muscle Health nutrition products are formulated to help protect and preserve lean, healthy muscle tissue. The product line includes, bars, powders and meal replacement shakes designed to be used daily to supplement a sensible workout regimen, or simply as part of a regular healthy diet to promote muscle health and lean body mass. The products contain a 6.6 gram serving of Fortetropin along with 20 grams of protein. In clinical trials, Fortetropin, the active ingredient in Ray Muscle Health products, was associated with a reduction in myostatin levels, as well as an increase in lean body mass and muscle thickness. It's important to note that the RE in Ray Muscle Health stands for Rebuild, Rejuvenate, Results. Dr. Buzz Aldrin, decorated combat pilot, Apollo astronaut and member of the company's board of directors, believes the products, which he uses daily, live up to the name. I am pleased that Re Muscle Health is tailored to the aging population as well as athletes and the fitness community, noted Dr. Aldrin, a former intercollegiate athlete and pole vaulter, in a company press release. MYOS is doing important groundbreaking work in muscle health, and I rely on Re Muscle Health products to help me maintain my lean muscle. They taste great and I've seen tremendous results, Dr. Aldrin said. It is a medical reality we hate to admit. As we age, the risk of osteoporosis increases. According to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, 10 million adults now have the disease. Another 18 million are at risk. Bones contain living tissue that naturally regenerates on a regular basis. Osteoporosis occurs when these bones are no longer able to recreate tissue as fast as it is lost. The result is a loss of bone density and strength. 
This breakdown can begin happening as early as age 30 and can be influenced by a variety of hidden factors, including lifestyle choices and even medication. It can be difficult to know whether or not you have osteoporosis because there are not necessarily any symptoms. Many people first discover they have the disease after fracturing a bone during a fall. Such falls can prove debilitating and even deadly for individuals with osteoporosis. Naturally, one of the keys to treating osteoporosis, in addition to doctor-prescribed medication, is stopping falls before they happen. This cuts painful fractures that are difficult to recover from out of the picture altogether. Prevention begins at home. Modern technology, such as a stairlift, might be the answer a loved one needs in order to create a safe space that doesn't readily lend itself to slipping, tripping or falling. For some, however, deciding to add a lift mechanism can seem daunting. New age equipment, such as the Acorn stairlift, is one of the most timely and reliable solutions on the market. Instead of extensive do-it-yourself home renovation, the Acorn Stairlift includes professional installation that is affordable and efficient, requiring only a few short hours and no additional home renovations. The device attaches to the stairs themselves and can be conveniently folded away when not in use. Living a healthy life starts with prevention. For older adults, decreasing the risk of a fall is as essential as a home they can feel comfortable residing in. One's wellness can be improved by participating in vigorous activities and through strength preparing. There are three basic ways of in general that a senior can utilize. These are cardiovascular work, strength preparing and aerobic exercise. One can stay strong by building muscles. Man's wellness routine ought to incorporate a workout routine which means to construct the muscles. Strength training can be done at least three times a week with various weights. One can start with light exercises and increase the weights and frequency as one feels comfortable. Cardiovascular work is the also vital. What is also important is that the person exercising keeps a schedule and religiously follows. For instance, if the mornings are convenient, then do it at this time. Or, if evenings are better suit, follow that time then. Personally, I do a little in the morning as time permits and then some in the evenings. This suits me very nicely in maintaining body balance and good health. The medical establishments also recommends that a senior follows certain nutritional good lines. These are three significant macronutrients in the eating regimen. These are fats, sugars and proteins. 1. They require them to drink a lot of water all for the duration of the day, particularly when working out. This is important. Limit the use of alcohol and totally cut out smoking. 2. Limit the use of sugars 3. If you are a diabetic, totally do not not sugar. 4. Eat a balanced diet and increase vegetables and restrict meat and flesh in general. 5. Avoid the use of sodas, cakes, and floor products. Also, it is important that the seniors read and research medical advice and new material keeps coming out frequently. A caveat would be prior to putting into practice these suggestions, it is paramount that a senior get a nod from his or her doctor. Well-being and health are significant worries for most seniors. It is because most seniors have not taken physical exercise seriously. Starting exercise at this age takes a lot of discipline. If that is you, have you have made the decision to start physical activity? Luckily, if this is you, it is not too late. You can begin reclaiming your well-being and wellness at whatever stage in life. Plan on starting. This is the first step. The next thing is to do it consistently. It is necessary to start where you can manage. What is your age? How physically fit are you? Do you have illnesses that will hinder your start? Consult with a doctor and seek his or her advice on what is appropriate for you and what you can do. However, on the off chance that your state of being isn't up to standard, start simply things like walking, moving limbs. In the beginning start, slow and progress as you are able to. The uplifting news is you can begin substantially more basically. Well-being and wellness require a little at a time. Yet, seniors don't have to hop into significant changes to improve their lives, even little switches can impact positively after some time. What's your present movement capable of? 
Going for a stroll around the square every day would be a decent beginning. How long has it been since you rode a bicycle consistently? Once you have done that, there are a lot of body movement and stretches you can do at home without lifting loads. Or then again perhaps straightforward, no sway practices like stretches would suit you better. Each can be performed at an exceptionally essential level by practically any senior, and you can expand your level as your body adjusts. You don't have to join a class for either. There are a lot of online recordings or DVDs accessible that you can track with at home. There are many online programs on the internet to help you. Does your local center have basic gym amenities? On the off chance that they have a swimming pool there you do water activities. They might have different games. This will be a great boost to you. Any apprehension you feel about beginning to practice before others will in all likelihood go away rapidly as you experience the social advantages of practicing with different seniors. Associating with a gathering of similarly invested peers your own age will likewise help you stay with it and uplift your feeling of achievement as you advance. What's more, recall, when you're truly prepared, the exercise center is always be there for you with exercises and people who might help you. On the off chance that you need to begin lifting weight at home, it's pretty much as simple as getting going with a couple of hand exercises purchased at your nearby game store or retail chain. In case you're feeling more gutsy, converse with trainers at any nearby exercise centers. An ever-increasing number of fitness coaches are taking seniors to guide them as to what exercises are needed. Experiment with different types of exercises. Stick to the ones that you are comfortable with. Add more to the repertoire as time goes on. You can build relationship with like-minded people and start groups making it more fun. Overall, the onus is to build endurance and better. Try more difficult routines such as walking further, strenuous activities and adding strength. The aim should always be to get better health.
exercise is important to seniors. If you are not doing it regularly, I suggest doing it slowly in the beginning. The easiest way, is to take walks. You can do this alone or with others. Initially, take it slow and walk for about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe in the morning and in the evening. If the weather is bad, walk inside your house, climb stairs or walk on the spot. Do this for about 3 weeks until it becomes a habit. Then you can up the tempo or moves to other forms of exercise. A word of caution, before you start an exercise regimen. Take it up with your doctor and follow his her advice. Sarcopenia is the natural loss of muscle strength and many body functions like movement. Sarcopenia occurs as we age from sometime in the 40s or 50s onwards. The result is experiencing some sort of frailty, weakness, and not being agile as we used to. Some people say, that deteriorating vision and loss of hair color is also part of the aging process. Probably, the bad part about sarcopenia is losing one's mobility, the inability to do what one wants, the inability to go where one wants to go, to lose our independence and being depend on others. This dependence on others, eventually takes the toll and results in being confined to bed, and needing help to get off, going to the toilet, bathing, grooming and having personal care. This is a thought that should send shivers up one's spine and should motivate and arouse one to do physical activity to stop some of the deterioration that comes with sarcopenia. Now with lack of mobility, we can see things going from bad to worse. Building muscle is part of the answer. How is this achieved? Some new research that has come out of late, suggests increased physical activity. Doctors have always said that exercise is important to good health and is critical and is part and parcel of good living. Some people prefer to let nature take its course, this leads to inactivity and increases health problems, in other words, we have to be proactive and to make health our, our own responsibility. In fact, physical exercise is paramount to good health, and activity is taking the road to perdition. Can we really do this or not? The prevailing theory used to be that aging is part of nature and nothing can be done about it. If you're 40 plus you're already experiencing some creeping muscle loss and it only gets worse as years go by. Is sarcopenia reversible? Experts say that it is and that the best approach to restoring or maintaining muscle strength is exercise, primarily strength training. Sarcopenia helps those who lift weights and can actually create better strength and bone density. By lifting weights you can turn back the clock. You can combat the effect of aging to look and feel younger. If you are in your mid-40s, you may already feel like you have less energy and strength. Experts say that the loss begins to accelerate after age 75 when an elderly person who doesn't exercise loses 30% of muscle per decade. The good news, the experts say, that it is never too late to begin an exercise regimen. You can do it in your 70s and even in your 80s. That is an encouraging thought. Researchers have found astounding results when older folks take up physical exercise. On the bright side, all the negatives we talked about earlier are decreased and one becomes more independent. Isn't that a great plus? In the last 30 years or maybe even longer exercise has become the new mantra. Yoga, Tai Chi, Pilates and other programs have taken new meaning. Gyms had become very prominent until the present virus situation put a stop to that. It is still possible to practice physical programs at home with or without equipment. There are tons of videos, for example on YouTube. We all have seen men and women with wonderful physiques and we are talking of 70 and 80 year olds, and they have done this with exercise and some other things like nutrition. Now, here is a dilemma for the medical community. If we have the answer to cure and prevent sarcopenia, why is it not halted? The same reason why diabetes isn't getting lowered, the same reason obesity increases, the same reason chronic diseases rise. People do not take time to implement the strategies needed, the discipline required to do what is good and not to do what is bad. There is reliance on doctors to solve the problems and not to take to health in their hands. Exercise is too painful and requires work and dedication. It is easy to let go. Technology has made our life easy. It is easier to drive than to walk, it is easier to buy package ready made food than to cook. It is easier to do many things that required work in the past. 
Now we are not talking about the developed world, this is happening in poor nations. Try this, stand on any street corner and count how many fit people you see, no, see how many slim people you see. Check this alarming statistic, in the coming years, people will live longer, there will be more seniors than now but, how many seniors' lives will have quality given the current trends of health and illness? Given what we know of sarcopenia, it appears to be precursor to many illnesses. Don't we owe it to ourselves to take better care of ourselves and make a difference? Each one, whether they realize or not, needs to do that. In the past, older folks were encouraged not to do exercises. This was believed to be the domain of the young. When you got old, especially after retirement, you were supposed to sit down, read, watch TV, and get up when it was absolutely necessary like to eat, go to the restroom or for something urgent. It was, even believed that physical exercise, could do nothing for the old. Some people, even believed that, it was harmful. Now, we are told different, we extol the virtues and benefits of physical activities. The good news is that, in most cases, it is not too late, to start doing exercises. This, I find, awesome, as it gives the senior hope, to be proactive and take health into one's hands. All this has changed in the last 25 to 30 years. Medical science and public opinion, now regard exercise, as an important component of life stages. As you grow older, metabolism slows down, and fat accumulates in the body. Limbs become stiff, arteries get clogged, which lead to high blood pressure, and diabetes and many other ailments affect the person. Exercise controls, the potential danger posed. Exercise supplies more oxygen to the blood and provides, better circulation to the body. A workout of 30 to 60 minutes daily or at least three times a week is recommended. A workout includes jogging, and weight lifting. Another aspect of the physical activity regimen. Should have an aerobic training, doing push-ups, these target the body. These strength-inducing exercises, build body mass, an important part of keeping away sarcopenia, the losing of muscle mass, thus causing weakness. Strength building helps keep the muscles well formed. These are essential to good health. One should also incorporate balance these are known to prevent falls. Falls in seniors are serious, as they can result in broken limbs, hips and cause harm to other parts of the body. Falls can cause hospitalization and entry into care homes. You don't want that. Stretching exercises help keep muscles strong and joints to be flexible and nimble. Whatever the case may be, seniors should not live an inactive lifestyle. This is a certain way to invite a host of illnesses. There is another benefit to exercise. Many seniors are prone to depression and loneliness. Exercise has a way of drawing the person out of him or herself. It is even better, if it is group exercise. How can the senior be motivated to do exercise? That is extremely hard because, it requires a plan, a commitment and finally, taking matters into one's hands and simply doing what is necessary, consistently. Seniors can be in pain and reluctant to do what is needed, they could be lazy and not willing to take the effort to participate after years of inertia. Some might be indifferent to exercise, or they could simply not be willing to make the effort. A physician can certainly help. By the way, it would a good idea to consult a doctor prior to starting an exercise program. A trainer could be included as that person can provide the right coaching and give the needed motivation. A senior can also pursue an entire exercise program on TV or on the internet. There are so many programs. It is necessary to make physical fitness a priority as this component will get one to your goal. Doing research on the importance of exercise can certainly assist the senior in his her journey. There is so much literature out there. It is a matter of looking for what is relevant. I trust that, with these directives, the senior is well equipped to perform adequately in the world of exercise.
Many seniors, by the age of 60 or even earlier, show signs of metabolic diseases or some tendency of them. Many people in this age range have elevated high blood pressure or blood sugar or arthritis or signs of osteoporosis or a combination of them. Extreme diseases such as stroke, heart attacks, dementia and Alzheimer's fall in this group. These ailments affect many as well, and increasingly so, unfortunately. There are hosts of other diseases besides those mentioned above, such as gut issues, back problems, shoulder issues, lung, kidneys and liver ailments that the elderly have. The question medicine and science hasn't been able to answer is this, despite advancement in technology, why has there been a rise in diseases? Why is there an inability to deal with illnesses effectively? Another point to be addressed is that these illnesses are no longer diseases of developed countries. Why 50 years, many countries of the developing world had practically no strokes, heart attacks and diabetes. Now, it is on the rise everywhere. I mention this because, I feel, that the role of physical exercise has been pushed aside. There might be rather reasons, for instance, nutrition but for the moment let's dwell on the physical role. In the past, the medical establishment and the public believed that exercise and movement was for the young and that the old should, relax and take it easy. Any movement of the body was frowned upon. This was the notion that I was exposed to some 30 to 40 years ago. Old people would sit in their armchairs and gaze, read or watch TV. They would only get to go to the restroom or to eat, in some cases, food was served to them where they sat. The women folk were more active. Besides cooking, they tended to all the household chores. A worse belief held was that exercise was counterproductive. There was no benefit whatsoever. It couldn't help with circulation and there couldn't body mass increase. The notion was that it could potentially harm the older person. Another myth that prevailed was that the old and the retired deserved and earned the right to move as little as possible. No one, for very few made the connection that the poor worked in the fields all day even in old age it seemed healthy for it. Fortunately, research has done a wonderful job of proving the connection between health and movement is a good one. I think that at the back of our minds we knew that but only in the last 20 to 30 years has that knowledge come to the forefront some have this belief and have done something about like exercising a little every day and doing it consistently and seeing positive results. By the same token, others have not and have seen little to no improvement in the bodies. The sad thing is that they have not given credence to the belief that exercise will help them. Physical activity during adolescence can lower risk of disease, and if you continue moderate, daily physical exercise well into adulthood, the results are particularly dramatic. Exercise into the senior years can be life-saving. Studies at Harvard and at other institutions of higher learning, have now firmly put that myth to rest. Recent studies suggest you only need light to moderate in seniors. If you can increase the tempo, all the better but the benefits will show even if one does a little. Statistics show that since the virus, exercise in seniors has decreased but illnesses have increased. Seniors have been advised not to go out but at the same seniors have less an indoor exercise. There are many reasons for this but motivation is probably the main issue. It takes more effort to exercise at home. The effect of stress on the body since the virus can only be guessed at this point. We don't have percentages at this point but it will probably show a lot of negativity. There is plenty of evidence that physical therapy involves exercise. In fact, doctors recommend it. The science of geriatrics encourages exercise as do many other branches of science and medicine. There are many exercises to address aging and recovery in older folks. Physical therapy is also used for younger athletes for example using strengthening, toning, walking, stretching and other forms of exercise. Why couldn't this also be used to help the elderly? In the older and not so older folks, exercises can be curative as well as preventative. For instance, strengthening exercises can help with legs and arms, toning and help with falls, knees and hips issues, fractures and the body as a whole. Isn't this a better way to address ailments? Welcome to the Health Proxy channel. This channel is where we provide you with healthy tips and strategies as to how you can live and maintain a healthy lifestyle. In this video, 
we are going to do a presentation on healthy eating and nutrition for the elderly but before we get to the presentation please remember to subscribe to this channel and also to like share and comment on this video without further ado let us get to the video presentation healthy eating and nutrition for the elderly is greatly impacted by several factors one of them being a change in body composition during the later years in life, the body will lose bone and muscle and gain fat because the hormones aren't very active anymore. There are many factors which hinder an elderly person's health. The information provided in this video presentation will help you to lead a healthy life no matter how old you may be. Water in the body decreases with age, so many older folks will become dehydrated very easily. Sometimes they won't feel thirsty, while other times it's too much work to pour a glass of water. With this in mind, it's recommended that they drink at least one ounce of water for every 2.2 pounds of weight. At this stage in life, protein is very important. Protein is needed to support a healthy immune system and prevent the wasting of muscle. Since energy needs are less, older folks should eat high-quality protein such as eggs, lean meats, whole tea, and fish. Carbohydrates are the main source of energy for the entire body. You can find carbs in bread, cereals, pasta, and other grain products. A diet that's high in fiber and water will help to prevent constipation as well. Fat intake for the elderly should be limited, not eliminated. You can limit fat by choosing lean meats, low-fat dairy products, and food preparation methods that don't include frying. For the elderly, iron deficiency can be seen with those who aren't eating much. Good sources for iron include lean red meats or breakfast cereals. Zinc intake is normally with the elderly, and to make matters worse, it's not absorbed very well either. Meat, poultry, and fish should be a part of your diet to help you meet the requirements for zinc. Calcium is one ingredient that most elderly folks simply aren't getting enough of. Most believe that milk upsets their stomach, and therefore they will avoid it. They should be getting around 1,500 mg of calcium a day, and non-fat powdered milk can be used in recipes as a substitute for milk. Other foods such as yogurt, low-fat cheese, and broccoli can also help you meet the requirements for calcium. In order to absorb the benefits of B12, the intrinsic fat cotter must be produced by the stomach. Most elderly people suffer from a deficiency in B12 because they have a condition known as atrophic gastritis. This condition causes inflammation of the stomach, bacterial overgrowth, and the intrinsic factor. Without the intrinsic factor, this vitamin can be absorbed. Each one of the above nutrients are needed to keep an aged body in good health. Elderly individuals should try to stay active and strive for a well-balanced diet. Even though the aged body isn't the same as it used to be, proper care and the right nutrients can help the elderly enjoy a healthy and long life. 